One of the things I tell parents is that we watch their child every heartbeat, every breath. I have loved kids and working with kids for as long as I can remember, and I've kind of been surrounded by them my whole life, and I knew that's exactly what I felt called to do and where I felt like my gifts would be best utilized. I have a passion for children. Their enthusiasm, their zeal, the way that they can overcome so much, and how strong that they are, and just to place a little bit of an impact in that is just amazing. A child life specialist is a professional trained in child development who can help patients understand more about their hospitalization, try to reduce the stress of being in the hospital. I'm going to try to meet a child on their level, depending on their development, and just talk to them in kid-friendly language to make sure that they understand everything that the team has been talking about. We want to give kids information so that there's less fear of the unknown, so we're going to give them step-by-step -step instructions in a kid-friendly way so that they know who they're going to meet, who they're going to see, and even what they're going to smell. As a cardiac social worker, I work alongside the child life specialists and the chaplain as the family support team. I always tell families that they can plan all they want, but once they come back from the surgical waiting room to see their child, they often have a difficult time. And I think that's a very normal response. And that's why we're there to help support them and let them know that what they're feeling, what they're experiencing is normal. While your child is hospitalized, we have a wonderful family center that's located just down the hall on the second floor. It's equipped with a family library, an ICU waiting room, a family kitchen lounge. That's also where our parent sleep pods are located, lockers, and four washers and dryers. Parents and other family members can park in the visitor parking garage, and it's very important that they remember to bring in their parking ticket to the first floor information desk. As long as they're able to name the child that they're seeing in the hospital, they can get their ticket stamped and purchase the five exits for $5. So they'll pay $5 up front, but essentially it's only $1 per visit. On the pre-op day, when you come in, we do a history and physical. You will meet with anesthesia, so they talk to you about your child going off to surgery on the next day. You will meet with a surgeon. They will go over the surgery with you, get you to sign consent for the surgery on that day. We will also do an echo to make sure we know everything is as we expect. We will do a chest x-ray and we will do lab work. It's a very long day. If you need to change the date, you will give our office a call. The office number is 404-785-0504, then we can get you a new date. Your pre-op clinic day can be a long day because there's lots of important people that are part of your child's care team, and so we want you to be prepared for spending a good amount of time at the hospital. To help your child cope with that, it's best to bring some activities and snacks for them so they can handle being in the clinic area for a long time. When you meet with your anesthesiologist, they will go over eating guidelines with you. It is extremely important that you follow those guidelines. NPO is nothing by mouth. If you hear anybody say NPO, we're talking about nothing to eat or drink by mouth. They will give you specific guidelines as far as the last time that your child will be able to have any solid foods and milk products, as well as any clear liquids. We will write that down for you and give you a tip sheet that will also have all the instructions down there so that you'll have that to refer to when you get home. A lot of parents ask the question of how soon should I tell my child about heart surgery? And we recommend that you think about telling your child the same number of days as their age. So for example, if your child is 13 years old, you know, telling them about two weeks before their surgery. This gives them enough time to you know, tell their friends if they want or prepare to miss school. But if you think about a younger child, you want to make sure that they don't have too much time to let their imaginations go wild and to get worked up about coming in for surgery. It's really important that we get to meet kids in the pre-op clinic because it allows us a chance to get to know kids and learn what's going to help them cope even after their surgery. Building that trust during that initial visit is really important. During the pre-op clinic day, the nurses will go with you over the instructions of the CHG wipes that we send home with you. Every child is required to be wiped down that night before surgery, and we will give you a packet of wipes. The product that we use is called CHG. It stands for chlorhexidine. 
It is an antibacterial skin cleanser, which helps to prevent infection. We ask the parents that they do a wipe the night before surgery, and the staff will then do another one the morning of the procedure when the child comes in. What you are going to do is just have your child take a bath or shower like they normally would any other night, dry off. We do not want any lotions, powders, creams, deodorants on their skin. After they've had their bath, we give you a packet or two of wipes, and we want you to do the wiping on the front and the back of the body. And that consists of from the neck all the way down to the toes, as well as the shoulder to the wrist area. You do not wipe their face, their hands, or go into any of the private areas, but everything else gets wiped for three minutes, front and back, and then we want you to just air dry for three minutes and put clean pajamas on and go to bed. And just be aware that when we come in that next day, the staff will again do the exact same procedure on your child just to help create an extra barrier of protection and prevent infection. At your pre-op clinic visit, you will get your return instructions. That would include your time to return to the day surgery department as well as all of the eating and drinking times. And once you return, you will sign your child in. We'll take you back with them to the pre-op area. That's where we'll have them get changed. After that, we ask you to wait in our waiting area. We do want to have somebody available all the time in case the surgeons or the operating room should need to reach you. We do not call on cell phones. We do call to the um, waiting area. So at least one parent should be available for us at all times. You'll get a phone call from the operating room nurse. Usually it takes about an hour, an hour and a half before you'll get that first phone call out in the waiting area. And then you can expect an update call approximately every hour after that. If for some reason you have not received your call, please do not hesitate to ask the receptionist to check on that for you. We'll be happy to call back there to the OR and have them give you an update. After surgery, the first time you see the child in the cardiac ICU, he or she will have the breathing tube in. They will have multiple IVs in that allows us to do monitoring and also to give medications. In the ICU, right after surgery, it is a one-to-one -one nurse to patient ratio. We're responsible for every aspect of the child's care from the moment they come into the cardiac ICU. I think it's always a little bit of a shock when you come into the ICU right after cardiac surgery. The kids have a breathing tube in. They'll usually have a catheter through the nose that goes down into the stomach that gets out extra air. They'll have a bunch of bandages across their chest. They'll have usually two chest tubes that'll come out somewhere around the rib cage. And then a number of additional catheters and wires that we use for monitoring. We look at every heartbeat, every blood pressure that is generated by the heart. Across our monitoring screens, we see continuously the heart rate, the respiratory rate, the blood pressure, the pressures within the heart. Family rounds are regular rounds, and so the families are more than welcome every time we're rounding. We start out, the nurses will go through the events over the past day, and then we have a sheet just to go through methodically all the data that is collected. So the families hear this, and then it gives them an opportunity to ask questions. They really are aware of what we're doing. We translate it and say, what we're doing is going to take the breathing tube out today. Instead of saying, we're going to do endotracheal extubation, we're open 24-7, and so whether the, the family is in the ICU or they're at home, they want an update, they're encouraged to call at any time. In the cardiac intensive care unit, we do allow siblings to come back and see their brother or sister, but during flu season, we usually restrict visitation to siblings who are 12 and older, just to further protect our patients from flu and other viruses. When your child is in the cardiac intensive care unit, families have a few different options in terms of lodging. If they live at least 50 miles away from the hospital, they are eligible to stay at the Ronald McDonald House, and they can stay there while their child remains in the cardiac ICU. The sleep pods are for families that may not qualify for the Ronald McDonald House or are not able to go home each night that their child is in the CICU. Either one or two parents can stay in a sleep pod, but they are only for the parents or legal guardians of the child in the CICU. If parents want to sign up for a sleep pod, they will go to the family center located on the second floor and request a room through the guest service liaison. We have nine parent sleep pods available each night, and if more than nine families sign up, then it does become a lottery drawing. But more times than not, everybody gets a room.
Once the child is ready to move out of the intensive care unit, they're gonna go to their own room. It's called the cardiac step-down unit where you can stay with your child 24 hours and be a little bit more comfortable. A lot of times they're gonna feel more like playing. It's their own space and it's a little bit calmer. There's less things going on for a kid in that unit. It's also important to know that only two parents can stay in the child's room in the cardiac step-down unit. No siblings or any other child under the age of 18 can spend the night anywhere in the hospital. Your time on the CSU is your time that you have to prepare for home. You'll have vital signs, you'll have daily weights, you'll do hands-on care. Each nurse has a cell phone that is only for them and they will give you that phone number. They'll put it up on the board for you. You'll always have direct contact with them if you need anything at all. You'll have lots of education throughout your stay on CSU. You also have classes to attend. As discharge coordinators, we see you throughout the discharge process. The discharge process begins on admission. We want to establish a rapport with you and for you to feel comfortable talking with us and um, we will facilitate your discharge process as smooth and as safe as possible. We meet with parents in the pre-op clinic and we introduce them with the ticket to home, which is a checklist of things we want to teach them before they go home. Then I'll see them again in the ICU, which I'll present them with the ticket to home at that time. I'll also follow them through the um, cardiac step-down unit and into discharge. There are two classes that are required for all parents to attend before going home. We introduce these classes in pre-op clinic and we'll give you an invitation at that time. You'll also receive another invitation once you're admitted um, into the ICU. There's the discharge class that goes over incision care, what to look out for when you go home, when to call the doctor. That class is available throughout the week. The next class is a CPR class. That class is a basic CPR class that's available to all parents, and we recommend that all parents go to that class prior to discharge. If your child's a newborn, we recommend that you go to the car seat class. The car seat class will talk about um, how to put the car seat into your car, um, the correct position, and the correct angle to put your child in the car seat as well. It's imperative that you stay with your child throughout the CSU stay because this is a time for you to be hands-on. The more you're hands-on with your child, the more you participate in the care, the more questions you're going to be able to ask and the more comfortable you will be once you are going home. Once the patient is discharged, within 48 hours, the discharge coordinators will do a follow-up phone call to assure that the parents are, feel comfortable at home and make sure they've received all their medicines, the child is feeding well. Once you're discharged from the step-down unit, if you live close enough, we do have you come back for one follow-up visit. If you are from far and it is not feasible for you to come back and see us, we just allow you to follow up with your cardiologist and if they have concerns, they will definitely give us a call. Uno is the newest member of our family support team and probably the most popular. He has already shown to have so many benefits clinically and he does everything from motivating a patient to walk during their recovery process. He might provide distraction during a medical procedure, but I think most importantly, he brings so much joy and happiness to patients. He has the ability to kind of take somebody outside of the hospital experience and he makes our unit feel a little bit more like home. One patient that we have right now, his, his dad told us that it was the first time that the patient has smiled since his surgery was when Uno came into the room. I am the cardiac chaplain and I work as part of the family support team. And my unique role is to provide spiritual support to our patients and families while they're here. And I feel really fortunate because this is a environment that really appreciates and affirms the diverse faith traditions and spiritual practices of each patient and family that comes through our doors. That's a huge part of my role here is taking the time to really get to know a family, what's important to them, what helps them cope while they're in this place, their beliefs and faith background that helps give them strength while they're here. I found a lot of families often tell me that having their child here in the hospital is a really big test of their faith. We have a beautiful chapel that's located on the first floor and I often tell families that if they need a place to just get away from the unit, to think, to breathe, to pray, to meditate, that the chapel provides that quiet environment for them. We know that each family's spiritual beliefs and practices are important to them and so chaplains are available to call your priest, rabbi, minister, 
and make contact with them and let them know you'd like them to visit. And we encourage families to contact their local minister. It's a privilege to be able to walk with families and journey with families through that process of questioning sometimes, but also rejoicing and sharing in the joys and miracles that present themselves here. I've done this for 14 years now, and it still amazes me that we get the kids stabilized, they wake up, and a few hours later, they get their breathing tube out. And I think it's in part due to the just really amazing resilience that kids have. A tremendous amount of experience and expertise occurs throughout the system. When the parents come in, they see all the people, all the busy, all the activity that takes place, and it's a bit overwhelming at first. But then after a while, when it's time to go to the floor and the kids are ready, some of the families are like, well, I'm really a little bit more comfortable in the ICU. We want to make that process as smooth, as safe, as efficient, and um, for the parents overall to feel comfortable and at ease when going home. The children here are amazing and resilient, and they're the strong ones, and it's my privilege to be able to journey with families while they're here. 